Well, at long last, Cubase 12 is here. But before we start looking at Cubase 12, we need to do a little housekeeping in Cubase 11. With any new version of Cubase, it installs with all the factory defaults, which is not much use when you've spent a lot of time and effort customizing it to your own needs. So how do you sort this out? What can you do to make sure that when you launch Cubase 12, it takes as little time as possible to get it back to the working environment that you want? Well, here's how we do it. Okay, so this is my desktop. And as you can see, I've already downloaded and installed Cubase 12. We have the funky new blue icon available to us, but let's, Go back to Cubase 11 and see what we can do to make life easier when we finally click on that blue icon. So here we go. This is Cubase and this is the first thing we need is a project because you can carry a lot of settings from one iteration of Cubase to another simply by loading up an old project. And in this case, what we have here is my 2022 mix template that I'm building up. I've gone back to basics, started from scratch and built up a brand new mix template, which is why this project has nothing in it. It's an empty uh, project that I'm using as a base for a new mixing template. What it does have is my current palette. The, I've set this up and I've labeled it and I know what everything is. That's not to say that it's going to stay that way because I'm looking into getting a better color scheme as I move forward. I'm finding this one a little difficult to work with too many pinks and blues and not enough other colors. A different philosophy is needed. That's another story. But what this project does have is a color scheme that I'm familiar with currently and that I can work with and loading that into the new version of Cubase should enable me to save that color scheme as the new default for Cubase. The other thing we need to save is our profile. All the different changes you've made to Cubase will be stored in your default profile. And what you need to be able to do is to export that. Now I have a profile here. Uh, that's my initials, but I will export a new one just in case I've made any changes, which gets saved into this documents folder uh, for Steinberg. And I'm simply going to name this 2022-C12 or C11. And that has now exported that and I could import that back in. There it is. I don't need to because this version of Cubase has my default profile, but I now know that that specific file is my most recent profile with all the most recent changes I've made to it. The other thing to have a look at is a few changes in the studio uh, connections. We'll start with the plugin manager. One of the most difficult things about Cubase when it loads by default is it doesn't recognize all the paths to your VST plugins. Uh, Native Instruments particularly seems to be one that it finds difficult to find. So if you come down to the bottom here and click on this little icon for the VST2 plugin settings, it will bring them up. Or well, you can get pen and paper out and write them all down, or you can click on plugin report, which will create a text document. I'll just save it in that documents Steinberg folder. And that will have a load of gubbins in it about your computer set up and all different things. But right in the middle of that text file, you will find all those paths in a text file that you can simply cut and paste when you add a new plugin path 
in Cubase 12. There's been some suggestion that VST2 plugins won't work in Cubase 12. Well, given the number of versions I've got, and just keep going down and down and down, I do hope that's wrong. Uh, one that has gone, or that will be going, just as an aside, is Rear Stream. That's a VST1. I've got a new plugin that uh, does the same job and is a lot more reliable, uh, but I'll feature that in a future video. So that's your VST2 plugin paths sorted out and documented. The last thing to do is back in Studio again, is under Studio Setup, is to come down to your remote devices. If you've made any changes to these, you need to hit the export button to generate the XML file that you will need to load back in to Cubase 12 if it doesn't pick them up as part of the upgrade process. It gets a little better every time Steinberg do an update, so I'm always hopeful, but I'm always disappointed. In my case, I have a generic remote configured for the Doit software that I featured at the end of last year. So I have exported this. All you do is click on export. It again opens uh, to a folder which you would set up. And here we have, in my case, that XML file there is um, my configuration for Doit. So I don't need to bother doing it again because I haven't changed it since I did that. And that's it. With that done, hopefully we're ready to fire up Cubase 12. But the first thing you've got to do is download it. And that, I'm afraid to say, has been a pig. But let me save you some time. When you come to download Cubase 12, you will get your download access code from Steinberg. You'll enter it in there. And in your list of my products will appear Cubase 12, whatever version you've got. If you click on that, you get a whole list of all the different things that you can download. However, if we just go to the, the standard downloads underneath, and we look at Cubase Pro 12 and Cubase Pro 11, there is not a lot of difference. Spectra layers is different. It's version 8, not version 7 in Pro 12. It is version 8. You've got obviously the Cubase Pro 12 application. But then look, Halion Sonic 3510, Groove Agent 510, Halion Sonic 3510, Groove Agent 510, Retrolog 2.3, Pad Shop 2.1, Retrolog 2.3, Pad Shop 2.1. And all of this down here, all of the optional content is the same. The only differences are the two demo projects that have been added. Uh, Cubase 11 had one by Venus Theory. We've now got two different projects, a pop project and a rock project, um, as part of the optional extras, which you can download or not, depends on you. Um, and coming back up, the only one that is additional is Verve. It's a fairly whopping additional at nearly nine gig. But if you've watched the demos on YouTube, you'll realize it's something a little special and I am looking forward to playing with it. However, Cubase 12 was released yesterday. As I record this, it's been out for 24 hours and it seems to me that Steinberg servers are having major issues. When I downloaded it and tried to follow the process for authenticating my license, what I managed to do was disable the license for Cubase 11. Running the e-licenser control managed to resurrect my license for Cubase 11, so I wasn't getting the this is valid for 30 days message. It'll be interesting to see what happens when I click on Cubase 12, but I'm going to have a go with that Steinberg activation manager, which has appeared in my list of new programs. So Verve is really the one that you want to download, as well as Cubase and Spectral Layers 1, which is recommended, but is really optional. What I found 
was that both the Cubase download and the Verve download hung. Once they had reached 100% download, they sat there and did nothing. They're using something that is supposed to be a download accelerator, but it appears to put the brakes on when it's actually completed the download and not do anything. On both occasions, I had to shut down the download assistant, restart the computer, restart the download assistant, and then it went from being a blue bar that said it was 100% downloaded to one that said pause here. And when I clicked on that, it then installed it. And as you can see, it's installed it. I've got the little green bar here. It's managed to lose the little green bar from there, but I do have that nice icon there. So the next thing to do is to launch Cubase 12. But that's another story. And until then, you take care of yourselves.